The trial was scheduled to start March 4th, but the ongoing appeals about Trump's claims of presidential immunity are making that start date impossible. And Ryan Goodman is out front. So, Ryan, um, here we are, uh, that this has been postponed indefinitely. And I guess, they're, you know, they're awaiting an immunity ruling. Uh, but what does that mean? I mean, I understand it's we knew it was going to be postponed. Right. I mean, that was understandable at this point because we hadn't gotten the ruling. But nonetheless, indefinitely does sort of have a heavy weight to it. It most certainly does, uh, because the judge, Judge Tutkin, could have put down another uh, somewhat provisional <laughs> date for the start of trial, but she didn't, uh, which gives us a sense of just how suspended uh, the action currently is as we await the D.C. Circuit. And as she even suggested, if and when <laughs> she gets the mandate from the D.C. Circuit. So uh, it could be that by the time they issue a mandate, her calendar is already full. Uh, so it really is just going to be waiting to see when that trial could start and if it could even start in the spring or the summer at all. Which, I mean, is incredible that we've reached this moment. I mean, advisors to the former president are telling CNN, you know, given what you're saying, uh, that they think this is a win for Trump and the campaign. Is it that clear cut? I'm not sure it's that clear cut, but it's certainly a good day for him. Uh, this is good news for him. Uh, the reason that it might not be that clear cut is that in a certain sense, the district court is sending a signal to the D.C. Circuit. Uh, she's basically saying in a certain sense, uh, this is be, this is very disruptive uh, to the trial. Now I've had to suspend everything. So that puts a little bit extra pressure on the D.C. Circuit to rule. And so we might still see a ruling from the D.C. Circuit. Then the Supreme Court decides whether or not it wants to act, and then everything could be put flat, could be put back on track. So definitely a good uh, day for President Trump, but not necessarily out of the woods. So in the context of what this means for the other trials against Trump, obviously, you know, you've got the question marks in Georgia that, that are out there right now. That, that could mean Alvin Bragg's hush money case, uh, which is the one that had been seen as the most politicized, uh, but it is a criminal case. That could be the one that goes First, after all of this, right, when he had, had sort of acquiesced and moved it so that that wouldn't be the case. But it looks like it's conceivable that it is first now. I would put my money on the idea that that's going to be the first case. And it might be the only case. It might be the only criminal case that's actually brought to trial before the election. Wow. But it's definitely it looks like it's going to be first. And I think that's another windfall uh, for President Trump. Because, as you say, it's it's certainly the weakest of the criminal cases. It has the least gravity to it, it might not even come with a real serious risk of imprisonment. It's that weak of a case in that sense. And it's also predicated in part on witnesses like Michael Cohen. So it's the case that if he were to wish which case would go first, it would be that one. All right, Brian, thank you very much. Thank and you. I mentioned the Georgia case as well in this context, and there was a bombshell admission in that